Oasis may have trashed a few hotel rooms, they may have swapped a few punches and played the fool for the music press, but behind all the bluster and bravado lies a genuine pot talent. Guitarist Noel Gallagher is, after all, Britain's finest young songwriter. As well as interviewing the brothers Gallagher, we call them live at the Buckley Tivoli in North Wales. Prepare for all the mayhem of a pop band and its glorious, swaggering ascendancy. The reason I started this band was because I love music and above all else I love music that I could write and when I joined the band I thought right well you know there's the car I just got to get in it and drive it about for a bit. lyrics. I mean, <coughs> they do mean so much to people, I know they do. But I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why supersonic means something to people. It means nothing to me. You know, but I mean, it's, it's all there for the listener, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's not about us, it's about them. You know, it's what they, it's what they get from it that matters, not us. I mean, because we can get, you know, we get to buy nice clothes and we go and travel the world and all that. What do they get? You know, they get the music. So it's it's what we can give to them, you know, really. A band like Oasis, they're trying to get the youth culture out of rave, taking drugs and stuff, and back into the gig where they belong. And it's, it's really happening. There's lots of new wave bands at the moment, but they're sort of like the ringleaders of it. And they're really good, and Liam Gallagher is just gorgeous, and I have his children. <laughs> well, they're like unique, really. I mean, compared to other things around, they're not like any other band, really. They're a brilliant band. England's the best band at the moment, I'd say. Well, this is really new, and they're really fresh, and they don't really care what the critics say or anything. They seem really confident. Just an amazing band. Well, they're doing a 20-minute live acoustic set, and then um, they're signing. Well, I want to get my album signed, but also I'd, I'd like great. to be able to say something to them. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many trendy people here. signed everybody's autograph yesterday for two and a half hours and we stayed, you know, an hour and a half longer than we should have. And I know people who just like stop there and then they go, right, I'm off. But there's, there's been people there since 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, and I, you know, we wanted to do that for them, you know what I mean, because without them we're nothing. And 
but you know, it's like if I didn't want to be in this band, or if I didn't want to sign autographs, or if I didn't want to, you know, live my life in a fishbowl, I'd just get up from here right now and take my case out on the van. I'd go to the airport and I'd go to Brazil, and nobody could stop me because I've got the money in the bank to do that. But I don't because I want to do it and I want to be here. And that's it. I love it. Someone said to me the other day, how are your bands? Yeah, it's top, you're just a ball of idol. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm only going because you're not right about your band. You know what I mean? The reason why we're in every page is because there's something to write about. We're playing the game, and we mean it. And we're honest, and we've got the best songs. So that's why we're in everyone's face at the moment. Before the album came out, uh, they were writing about what goes on on the road, and all, you know, you know the, the trouble at gigs, and, you know, I've had a black eye, and stuff like that, and there's been, you know, a couple of hotels been trashed or whatever. Uh, and I was a bit like, yeah, but what about the music? But now the album's been reviewed and they've actually gone in and reviewed the record for what it is, then I'm happy now, you know, because now everyone knows it's a great record. Like that. I used to be myself.
Probably people have got to realise it's like the 14-year-old kids, right, who are into this band. Who, when the Stone Roses done Spike Island, were nine. So they've never known anything like that. All they've known is Two Unlimited and Prodigy. Right? And then there's like 20-year-old people who were 15 at Spike Island who've now grown up. And they remember that. And they can see, I think, they can see some in us that they got from Spike Island. But the important thing is, is that there's a lot of 14-year-old kids who were nine when Spike Island was happening and they couldn't get in or they weren't even interested in music and we would be the first band that they get into. And then if we can turn them on to the Beatles and the Stones and the Stone Roses and all the rest of it, then, you know, music goes on with it. You know, if they go out and buy a few Beatles albums and pick up a guitar and then start a band and influence the next generation of nine-year-olds, then rock and roll won't die. We have got a, an hard edge and a pit who's pretty, pop, pretty poppy with it, you know what I mean? And then all you've got is like, take that, you know what I mean? After that, after that age, you know what I mean? There's nothing else, you know what I mean? People who are a bit older than what, you know what I mean? Say they're 17, 18, there's nothing else for them. Do you know what I mean? And the melodies, I can write them like, I mean, like every day in my life I can write, but the words are the ones, it's the part of the song where I've got a, you know, if somebody said to me, oh, you know, we need a, another song for such and such a release, whatever, by tomorrow, I can go and write a tune with a melody, but the lyrics are something I've just got to wait for. I just wait and I sit in my little flat on my own with, uh, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing at the time and just sit there and wait. Um, and the lyrics just come, I can't force myself to write lyrics, but the music's easy, the music's a double. Oh, he's not writing for me, he's writing for them. He's writing some bits of me, you know what I mean, and for the band and that, thing, but he just writes his thing and that ends right with me. He's the man, he writes the gear, so I think it's good, you know what I mean, because I think it's really good that way, because I ain't got loads of people. And, you know what I mean, going, oh, yeah, well, I think this bit goes in. It worked for a lot of other bands, you know what I mean? It made nice things, but it's got it sewn up. It's got, he's wrote songs that, you know what I mean? He's got hundreds and hundreds of songs that are just mega, and they go different, you know what I mean? Different, it's totally different from what we're doing now. So why ain't fair? Just let him get on with it. <laughs> Just wanna fly. Baby, did you ever feel my pain? 
go back to Manchester and stuff, it's like, I mean, I've got nothing to say to anybody about, about the band or about me. I'm not going to go around talking about myself or anything like that. So if I go out and I'm just sat down, someone will come and say, all right, how are you doing? I'll say, sound, how are you? And I'll say, great. And then that'll be it. And then it'll be, I've seen him arrogant or whatever, you know what I mean? He's not even speaking to us, but it's like, I've got nothing to say, you know. You know, I don't, I don't want to go back home to where I used to live and tell people that I've been to America and I've met, you know, this one, I've met that one, I've been there, I've, you know, and I've seen this and I've done that, because that, if it, because I've met people like that and I find that boring for people to talk about themselves all the time. I mean, I've, you know, I've got nothing to say to anyone. Except hello, how are you doing? Your friends know the score. There's people out there who are known, who are have known. And there's been rumours going, oh yeah, I'm going to slap him when he comes back off tour. It's like, oh, what for, you know what I mean? No, oh, no, you do, you're saying this, you know what I mean? Loads of stuff like that, but them, they're not my mates, you know what I mean? They're the ones who change. I've got time for for people and little things outside the band. I've got more time for people now, as a matter of fact. But, you know, people don't seem to understand that, you know, they think that when they see you on the TV or they read about you in the press that you're some superhuman being who's just, who goes like that, sails through life. And they don't understand that you have good days and bad days, you know what I mean? I get down, you know. I mean, I've cried about some of the things that have happened to me, but nobody's been there. And I, you know, and I'm not one for going on saying, mm. You know, I'm a tortured artist because I'm not. I mean, most of the time I'm a pretty sort of happy-go-lucky guy, but, you know, I do have good days and bad days, you know. And some people just couldn't, I just still can't understand that. They think you're just some superhuman being who's got money and who's a bit glamorous. So you've got to be that person that you see on the TV all the time. And in reality, you're not. You know, you're just, I'm just the same guy I was, you know, four years ago before all this started. Lost a lot of friends. I split up with my girlfriend, I was with, going out with this girl for about six years, like living with her and all that. I don't think I'll ever get over it, you know what I mean? And a lot of friends that I had sort of, I don't know, thought that it was always become a pop star, so he's off travelling the world doing whatever and he doesn't need us anymore. But it ain't that way, you know what I mean? Songs that, that won't work right, that won't be right. Let's do what we're doing. Like Biggs' dinner, it's an acoustic song. Yeah, let's have it. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Right, so we, um, we'll say what we'll do, we'll say what we'll do. We'll do a sad song last, yeah? So you can just play your little game. Alright? What are we doing it? You're not doing it. You're not doing it. I'm not into slapping anyone around. But it's like there's days when I've needed a slap and he's slapped me. 
And there's days when he's needed a slap, so I've slapped him. I'm going on a big fight, man. Talk for about two months. You know, I'm going like that. Just like that. And then just sort of like growing up one day. And then now I've got to start talking. I mean, in a band, it's not right for all the other people in the band. When they're coming in after the gig, we get off after down the wall with us and everyone else, they then free stay on. I come back stay, me and him are like, oh, fuck, like, I'll pay, you know what I mean? So we had a chat with the manager and said, right, you know what I mean? it's, not, it's not right, it's not healthy, so, chill. We can't work it out. We can't work it out. Right, mate, you're name. What are you doing? 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 Just not quite there, you know what I mean? That's what it'd be like. You know what I mean? Or like, whatever. Depends. That's what I like. What I like. What I like. Today's, it's today, Tuesday, yeah? You know what I mean? People coming here tonight on a Tuesday. It's raining. It's in Butler. People are coming down here and going, yeah, man. Top one, this is going to be a mega night. And he's giving it something, you know what I mean? It happened to me with the roses. I went there and I thought, yeah, man. It's top, man. I'm really glad to be part of it. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> We can have a pretty the future. It's not up to us, you know what I mean? All we can do is write and record. And if the people buy the records, then we'll be part of 1995's pop history. Hopefully we'll still be going in the year 2000, you know what I mean? But as for 1994, oh, this is our year without shadow, without no one can touch us this year. You know, we can go on a roll. I can see it again sometime, I was. 